You know by now you always want that huge upside for fantasy football and during the bipocalypse it might be even more important you have that one guy who goes off for you. Before we talk start sit, let's talk NFL pickums. You want to make sure you lock in your picks on underdog and if for some reason you haven't signed up for underdog yet, well you get a free pick in week 12. It's Jameis Winston on Thursday night just getting a yard. That's right. Take the hire on 0.5 total yards. That's your free pick em. as a new customer. Just sign up using code ENDGAME because when you do that as a new customer on Underdog, you get the free pick. Plus, you get up to $1,000 of bonus cash. Let's kick it off with some big name wide receivers who aren't really no brainers, but maybe this week they should be. This week, A.J. Brown should definitely be a no-brainer for you. After four, I guess what I would call duds by A.J. Brown standards, he's in a huge bounce-back spot this week, a, a spot where he can absolutely go off against this Rams defense. Rams currently allow the seventh most fantasy points to wide receivers on the outside. They've also allowed a wide receiver to score in all but two games this year, and kind of sneakily, they're becoming a bit of a pass-funnel defense. They now rank top 10 against the run, bottom 10 against the pass. We've seen wide receivers like Marvin Harrison Jr., Jawan Jennings, Jackson Smith and Jigba. They have all had their best games of the season, maybe of their entire careers to be honest, against this Rams defense. Why can't AJ Brown have his best game of the season against this Rams defense? If Saquon Barkley is getting bottled up by this Rams run defense at least, as much as Saquon Barkley can get bottled up, the Eagles might actually have to throw the ball here. And the Rams offense with Puka and Cup healthy could absolutely put points up in this game. This could be a sneaky shootout type of game. I think A.J. Brown is about to go off in Week 12 and help everybody that has him take home the W. Well, I'm going to put some confidence in a guy you just mentioned, Marvin Harrison Jr. I've had a hard time really just being all in on him as far as starting and sitting because you just don't know. I One thing I think we didn't expect from Marvin Harrison Jr. was that he was gonna be boom bust. It's just hard to trust him, but I'm feeling good this week. I'm gonna go with it and here's why. So first of all, you know we follow Matt Harmon, friend of the show, we had him on before. Reception Perception just released their rookie report mid-season, something that I don't think they had done before. And you know, as far as Marvin Harrison's chart, it's a lot of green. In fact, all of it is green except for one route and that's the nine, that go route, just basically vertical, run deep, and hope for the best. They're using him a little bit more the way they should have been all year over the last couple of weeks. That's why you've seen him more productive. And, you know, the Cardinals are coming off their bye week. You know, maybe Harrison gets a little bit of a bump because I feel like they're going to try to scheme ways to get him even more involved because that's what they really ought to have been doing this whole time. Right now, according to Fantasy Points, Harrison is top 15 among receivers in expected fantasy points per route because he gets the Seattle Seahawks. And this is a defense that you don't think of as a really leaky pass defense, but that's what they've become lately over the past four weeks. Seattle's actually given up the most fantasy points per game to wide receivers. Yeah, Seattle, for some reason, is just getting into some high scoring shootout type games. And this could be another one. I feel like Harrison should have a very high ceiling. And by the way, if you feel like we're helping you out with this video and your fantasy matchups, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Why not go to another rookie wide receiver that is really hard to decide what to do with on a weekly basis? And Malik Neighbors, after looking like a no doubt stud early in the season, has kind of come back down to earth a little bit here. But I think this week he goes back to looking like a stud against this Buccaneers defense. They're allowing the fifth most points to outside wide receivers. They're giving up the sixth most yards per game to wide receivers and over a touchdown per game to wide receivers. They also play cover three at the highest rate in the entire NFL. Malik Neighbors yards per route run this year against cover three is 10th best among all wide receivers. Now the worry here of course, and I'm not gonna ignore it, is that Tommy DeVito is now the starting quarterback. But even with Daniel Jones, Malik Neighbors still put up some big games. And whatever you think of Tommy DeVito, and I don't think very highly of Tommy DeVito as an NFL quarterback, I at least don't think he's worse than Daniel Jones. I feel like this is almost a lateral move for Malik Neighbors. And Tommy DeVito at least can kind of throw the ball deep a little bit, but it doesn't matter because Malik Neighbors gets so many targets in this offense. They funnel this offense through Malik Neighbors. The target share alone, even with Tommy DeVito, keeps him afloat. And now you give him this smash matchup against the Buccaneers. I think we could finally see Malik Neighbors have another big game this week in Week 12.
Well, that brings me to Jaden Reed. So first, let me start with this. Jaden Reed, I get it. He's kind of annoying to own. He's actually become just like Christian Watson, his teammate, a guy who's either going to have a big game or do very little. So you never know what to get. I think you're going to get a good game this week. Now it's San Francisco and you think that's a good defense. You're probably thinking of last year. This year's Niners defense has just been okay. They have not been dominant by any means. And Nick Bosa, top pass rusher, big factor for them. Doesn't sound like he's gonna go in week 12. And you saw what happened. Seattle marched right down the field toward the end of that game to win in San Francisco when Bosa was out. The Niners, out of the defensive formations they play in pass coverage, primarily it's cover three. And you know who's really good at beating cover three? It's Jaden Reed. In fact, if you look at fantasy points per route run, only Quentin Johnston, yeah, Quentin Johnston is the only one who averages higher than Jaden Reed out of all receivers against that kind of coverage. I know he's coming off a disappointing game, only two targets last week. I can't explain that, but it was a tough matchup. This matchup is not nearly as tough as people think. He has really been good at getting separation all season long, honestly. In fact, only Alec Pierce averages more yards per target than Jaden Reed on the season. He just needs the targets. So as long as he gets even just a few targets in this game, then he's going to have a big one. I'll tell you what, even if he doesn't go off, which I think he will, but you've got to be insane not to take this pick. On underdog right now, Jaden Reed, 48 and a half receiving yards. I'm definitely going higher on that. So you take that pick and if you're new to underdog, you get that free pick. You can combine your freebie with this pick or any other pick you like and you have a great chance to win. Just make sure when you're signing up for underdog, you use code ENDGAME to take advantage of the freebie plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash on your first deposit. All right, moving along here, let's get to some players that we consider more like flex options but with huge upside. I'm going to start with Brian Robinson Jr., running back of the Commanders, going up against Dallas. I mean, Dallas obviously is a mess right now. The defense is a mess, but I think what's kind of gone under the radar is how bad Dallas has become against the run. They are now the second worst defense against the run. They've allowed running backs to go over 100 yards in five straight games now. And last week, coming back from injury, Brian Robinson had 16 of the team's 18 carries, scored another touchdown and in this game game script should be very favorable don't have to worry about you know falling behind like they were last week having to throw a lot a bunch of austin eckler dump offs this is a game where the commanders at worst should be at least close if not winning this game so you know brian robinson is going to get a ton of carries and i talked about that touchdown upside you look at brian robinson in the games he's played this year he has eight of the nine inside the five carries for this team when they get near the goal line it's either him or Jaden Daniels that's getting the rock basically to score the touchdown. And these days, it's not Jaden Daniels, so it's probably going to be Brian Robinson. I think in this matchup, now fully healthy, no worries about the hamstring anymore. you got to fire up Brian Robinson this week, if at all possible. Well, I'm going to go with another running back that you might not be sure what to do with. I feel good about Bucky Irving and the run game for Tampa Bay this week. They're going to be able to establish the run, and they're going to do it pretty well because the Giants, although you don't think of them as one of the worst run defenses in the league, again, you might be surprised to know, they allow the highest yard per attempt rushing average to opposing running backs, and Bucky Irving, he averages 5.1 yards per carry, which is pretty good for a running back, and in fact, only... Derrick Henry, Jameer Gibbs, Saquon Barkley, and somehow Tank Bigsby have a higher rushing average right now than Bucky Irving. You know, he also is one of the league leaders in broken tackle rate. In fact, among all running backs with at least 21 carries, he is at the top of that leaderboard, 29% missed tackle rate. This week, they can get back to basics, run the ball against this mediocre Giants defense, and probably not have to worry about coming from behind either. And Bucky Irving is probably going to be a very good RB2 going forward the rest of the season as well because they have a nice schedule down the stretch. All right, how about more rookies? But this time, another receiver. Yes, the Chargers passing attack has been rolling lately, and Ladd McConkey has kind of been the biggest beneficiary of this, and I think it continues this week against the Baltimore Ravens. I know you look last week and you think, well, they shut down Russell Wilson, and sure they did, but... George Pickens still had eight catches for 89 yards against this defense. Baltimore also allowing the eighth most fantasy points to slot wide receivers, which is where Lab McConkey primarily plays. Last week, he led the team with a 31 first read percentage. He's the guy that Justin Herbert is looking for 
first and foremost. And I talked about the Chargers passing attack. Since week seven, they have the sixth highest pass rate over expectation. And on the season, the Ravens defense allows the fifth highest pass rate over expectation. It's going to be what we saw last week. A lot of throwing for Justin Herbert, which means a lot of Lad McConkey against a Baltimore secondary that I don't believe is very good still, even after what they did to Russell Wilson last week. Lad McConkey over the last three games is actually sixth in average separation among all wide receivers and eighth in win rate among all wide receivers. He's getting open all over the field. He's Justin Herbert's number one target and he gets one of the best matchups in week 12. You've got to fire up Lad McConkey. Yeah, I'm going to love Lad this week for sure. And so this might not be quite the slam dunk, but I'm going to like Romo Dunze in Chicago here. Now we saw last week, Caleb Williams, finally having a better game, real life game, even if it wasn't a ton of fantasy points. So you just gotta feel better about the Bears offense in general. But I'll tell you what, it wasn't a huge statistical game for Romo Dunze, six catches, 65 yards, but it was a pretty high target share for him, 10 targets on the day. And he in fact finished week 11 as one of the top 20 of all receivers in expected fantasy points. Now I know that expected fantasy points probably don't translate to actual fantasy points all the time and you don't care about expected fantasy points you care about what's going to be on the final scoreboard for your team but of course it's a very good predictor and an indicator of production and if he's going to get that kind of target share which i do believe he's going to continue to get it's going to lead to bigger games and he's also getting those higher a dot throws depth of target he's getting big chunks of yardage the big play is bound to happen. The touchdowns are bound to come eventually. And Minnesota's defense, while again, very good real life defense, they still give up a lot of points in yards to wide receivers. Also the coverage type here, again, this favors a guy like Odunze. They play a mix of both cover two and three predominantly. And Romo Dunze is pretty good at beating those zone coverages. I actually like DJ Moore a little bit this week as well, but I think I like Odunze more because he's getting more targets and he's getting deeper targets. So this could finally be a boom week for him. We always promise you a streaming tight end and quarterback that could pay off huge. Let's start at the tight end position. I'm going back to the Chargers. I'm going Will Disley coming off that nice game last week. Now he didn't get that crazy, you know, first read percentage that he did the week before. That was like the selling point for Will Disley for everybody, but it didn't matter because he still got involved enough. And this Baltimore Ravens defense, even though they're a little bit better against tight ends and wide receivers. They're not much better. They're allowing the third most receptions per game and the fourth most yards per game to tight ends. Will Disley has the seventh highest first read percentage over the last two games, and it may surprise you to learn, as it surprised me to learn, Will Disley leads the entire Chargers offense in red zone targets. I thought for sure it would be Quentin Johnston, but nope, it is Will Disley, number one on this team in red zone targets, so he's always a threat to score a touchdown. But in this matchup against the Ravens, he could catch a bunch of passes, get a bunch of yards. And if he gets a touchdown, that's just the cherry on top of what could be one of the best streaming tight ends this week. And he's still widely available out there in most fantasy leagues. So if you need a tight end, go out and grab Will Disley. Now, if you need a quarterback for this week, and look, there are a couple of big name quarterbacks on by, so you definitely might. I know you might be tempted to look at... Matthew Stafford, Bo Nix coming off four touchdown games. I'm gonna go to a guy who had a good, but not amazing game. It's Tua Togavaloa. I know this Dolphins team has been disappointing offensively, and that pretty much includes almost everyone in the receiving core, except for Johnu Smith somehow. And I'll just get this out of the way was first. This is why it's shocking to discover that Tua has the lowest average depth of target among all qualified quarterbacks. But I will say this, the last four weeks since returning from the concussions, Tua has been really good. A 112 quarterback rating, he's been efficient. A seven to one touchdown to interception rate, that's pretty good. And here's the thing that does give him some hope for fantasy. Unlike last year, where when they got near the goal line, they were just feeding Raheem Mostert and he was scoring all the touchdowns. They're actually throwing it a lot more inside the 10 yard line and in fact in these last four weeks right since Tua has come back only Joe Burrow and Pat Mahomes have more pass attempts 
inside the 10 yard line. Mostert is toast. Even if he plays, he has been so bad this year, fumbling. He's not gonna be vulturing these touchdowns anymore. They're gonna have opportunities to throw the ball and score some touchdowns because even though the Patriots don't have the worst pass defense, it's really because teams don't need to pass against them very much. And I think Tua will finally have his chance to exploit a mediocre defense and have a big game because the Patriots, yeah, they don't get turnovers. Only four interceptions on the season, 16 touchdowns allowed. I think Tua has at least two touchdowns in him, possibly three this week. Those players could come up huge for you, but look, if you still need help setting your lineup across the board at every position, check out all the start sit videos in this week's playlist.